Good news for anyone living with type 1 diabetes after successful trials of a new tracking device that can automatically pump insulin into the body. Sounds it, amazing. It does. It really, really does. I'm very excited about this conversation, this chat. Uh, more than 100,000 patients could benefit from the new technology, which acts like an artificial pancreas, they said, helping patients to manage their blood sugar levels without having to take those regular finger prick readings. Uh, someone who knows all about this pioneering treatment is Yasmin Hopkins, who, delighted to say, joins us in the studio has received an artificial pancreas as part of a pilot yeah. um, which is sounds like an amazing sentence tell us all about it what was it like being part of this scheme honestly incredible it just it's life-changing for the better mm. um, before we had access to this technology now that actually links up does a lot of things for us I'm sure I can go a little bit into um, it was so tough anything can change a type 1 diabetes patient's blood sugars. Um, today, there's been a lot of enthusiasm because the NICE guidance has actually come out about it. And it's in consultation. It's a draft, so we'll actually see if the NHS is going to fund this mm. for these people. That's the potential there. And it looks like they are. And now that means that we all get this. So. When I read through this brief, I was just blown away. It honestly looked like science fiction becoming yeah. science fact. <laughs> I, can, I can say she was very excited this <laughs> yeah. afternoon. Confused as well. I didn't, how does it work exactly? Because apparently it goes underneath your skin. So, so how does that work and how does yeah. that change things? It's great that I can be here in person because it's actually much more visually easier to okay. see. We'll turn to camera one so, over there and show yeah, us over there. Yeah, so this is one of the sensors. Um, this is only one of the systems that's looking to be available to more patients. This reads my blood glucose, um, which can go up and down depending on uh, stress, um, adrenaline, <laughs> excitement. Well, probably um, now isn't helping much. But I like, yeah. say, yeah. <laughs> you say that, but then, so today is the perfect example. Today, like I say, we've got so much excitement. The adrenaline has been pumping all day and my blood sugars have not come out of range all day because what's happened is this has said, this bit here, has gone, oh, your blood sugars are rising. So then the insulin pump that's just on my belt here, super easy, super small, little tube into my tummy that I change myself every three days. This tells that, could you just pop a little bit more insulin in wow. to bring those blood sugars down? And you're touching away, so you can assume it's not painful, it's... No, not I could touch, I won't, but I could touch... <laughs> or you can bump into somebody and it won't hurt you. 100%. So ha give us an idea of what what today would have been like under the under the old system and yeah. what would have been different? I mean, we have um, uh, type 1 diabetics, we try to keep, it, keep in range. And that's anything from 4 to 7 to 10. There's a little bit of flexibility, um, which means that... Out of those areas, we're either low or we're too high, which causes all sorts of arrays of horrible symptoms. This, today, has ensured that I'm not out of those areas, so I've been able to concentrate, I've been able to do my usual work, I've been able to travel, even things like walk the dog. Previously, you have to constantly think, am I leaving the house in 10 minutes? Do I need to bring Lucas aid? Do I need to bring extra insulin? This just is a helping hand. Amazing. Yes, this is... A lot of it's new information because we yeah. do talk a lot about type 2 diabetes, yeah. type 1. And actually, in the ethnic minority communities, it can be quite prevalent, which is why when it comes to type 2 diabetes, I'm all across it. Type 1, I don't know too much about. So when you're saying blood sugars go up, yeah. what could happen to you in that kind of situation, that scenario? Yeah, it's really important that we actually do distinguish the difference between type 1 and type 2. Um, and as you say, type 2 does tend to get a lot of media coverage, whereas type 1 doesn't. Um, only 8% of the diabetes population in the UK has type 1. Yeah. But like we say, that's still 100,000 people that could get access to this and 400,000 of us with it. What that means, though, is that your blood starts to tend to rise after a meal even, um, with all these things that I've mentioned. And what does it do to you? When, when for me, yeah. in personally, it's such an individualised disease, but mm. for me personally, especially going high, it's the concentrating. You could be watching the TV and you go, what just happened in the last five minutes? What? And you feel nauseous, the sickness. A lot, hopefully, people can, know, can relate to hangovers um, in the adult population. <laughs> um, whereas if your blood sugars go low, and this is where we see a lot of danger, the blood sugars going low, that's the terrifying bit. That's when we get shaky. There's not enough sugar going to our brain. We're sweating. Um, and it's really important that people know those symptoms because even things like this can't always avoid that. 
So NHS England have done an amazing job at making sure that people get this so we can prevent all those highs, lows and further complications. But is, there's, still, there's still a way to go. Truly, truly amazing. Incredible. Yasmin, thank you so much for no, coming on. And honestly, I just you. hope this is rolled out for other people. Yes. Thanks for showing it to us as well. Same. Thank Thanks, you. Yasmin.